everybody. My name is Marcel. I'm a senior sales engineer at Looker. Um, again, thank you all for coming and taking time to come to our session here. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about BigQuery, specifically BigQuery machine learning and how it fits in with Looker. If you guys read the keynote this morning, there was a little sneak preview in there, but we're going to dive in a little bit deeper, um, give you a little bit more background about BigQuery itself, and then of course the integration. So I'll be talking about the Looker side, and Hussein's going to talk about the uh, BigQuery side. So if you want to, thanks, Marcel. Away. Hi everyone. My name is Hussein Almadi. I'm a software engineer at Google, one of the BigQuery Google BigQuery architects, and uh, I'm happy to talk about predictive analytics with BigQuery ML and uh, Looker. Uh, let's just start by looking at BigQuery and how it basically transformed uh, data analysis over the years. Uh, so if you see what BigQuery did is basically we, uh, BigQuery enabled organizations and companies to easily bring in data to the data warehouse and also made it much easier to do analysis on that data. The next logical step in that evolution is to basically do the same with machine learning. Uh, enabling organizations uh, to leverage machine learning needs basic basically simple access to the data in the data warehouse and doing the machine learning tasks on that data. So let's uh, take a step back and look at the machine learning tasks today. Uh, let's consider two scenarios where we have a data analyst uh, who might be interested in building regression models from the data uh, in the data warehouse. Or uh, if you have a data scientist who, is, who wants to build a TensorFlow model or a model in scikit-learn, uh, both of these uh, tasks basically start by extracting data from the data warehouse. So a small subset of the data is extracted from Google BigQuery, and then uh, the analyst might build a regression model, but since it's just in a small subset of the data, it's usually not very accurate. So they have to go back and uh, extract some more data, do the uh, training again, evaluate the model, and this uh, iterative process goes on and on. So there is a lot of complexity and overhead in this process. Uh, the same applies to the, the other case where we have a TensorFlow or scikit-learn model. We might need to go back and extract more features to make a more accurate model. So it's th again, this whole iterative process of extracting data and uh, doing retraining. So we basically identify two uh, fundamental approaches today with machine learning uh, and uh, data warehouses. One is that uh, a lot of companies struggle with getting uh, data scientists. There's just not enough data scientists to do all that uh, valuable machine learning tasks. Uh, the other problem is that it's very expensive and very complex to get the data out of the data warehouse and, and use it for building models. Uh, so the way we want to solve it is by introducing BigQuery ML, uh, basically bringing machine learning using SQL into BigQuery. Let's take a look at that. So basically what we want to do is that we want to use familiar SQL language, something that uh, every uh, data analyst or data scientist is used to. And we want to be able to train models within BigQuery without the need to take, in, uh, to take the data out of the data warehouse. That's, that's pretty important to uh, simplify this whole process of machine learning. Uh, and, it, and the third thing is to not worry about things like hyperparameter tuning or um, you know, feature transformations. We want all of that to be automated and taken care of by the system. Uh, let's look at an example of how this might work. Uh, let's say we have an organization with some data in GA360 and some in-house revenue data. Uh, the organization will bring all of that data into BigQuery to use uh, to join the data, you know, get some insights from the data, uh, and perform some uh, you know, business intelligence and visualization through Looker. Now, BigQuery enables uh, learn, uh, training models using SQL, and that can all be uh, used uh, within Looker to do visualization and reporting. And, while the model sits in uh, BigQuery, we can go back and retrain the model without taking the data out multiple times. And finally, the, the model can be used for predictions for uh, running the, uh, an email marketing campaign. So there are multiple use cases of this. We already have uh, several different sectors basically using BigQuery ML for uh, uh, prediction and, and learning from media to uh, smart cities to security uh, use cases to name a few. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about this SQL, uh, the concept of using uh, SQL to do modeling. Uh, on the left-hand side, I have a query, a SQL query that does uh, training uh, for us. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very simple example where we have a table, and the table has some data about uh, weather 
data and uh, traffic patterns. And we want to basically predict the traffic pattern based on the weather data. It's as simple as doing a select statement in SQL and uh, writing a create uh, model statements like creating a table. And the only options that are needed here is just the type of the model, which is a linear regression model, and the label that we want to predict. And by running this command, we have a model within BigQuery that can be used in other SQL statements for doing the prediction. That's the statement on the right-hand side where we are selecting uh, from a table, data from a, a test table, and using this ml.predict function to, um, to evaluate or, or predict basically the, uh, the label that we are interested in. So it's as simple as that. What's happening behind the scene here is basically uh, we're using BigQuery's uh, engine parallel engine to, to train these models at scale. So regardless of how big the data set is, we can basically reuse all of that uh, parallelized distributed processing of BigQuery in the back end to, to train the model. We also allow auto-tuning uh, for the learning rate and also um, you know, automatic test and training splits, which is very useful uh, to make it just as simple as writing a SQL query. Uh, for Numerical features, we do standardization. For uh, string features, we do one-hot encoding automatically. For some of the advanced users, we also provide some knobs for tuning, such as uh, L1, L2 regularization, train and test split strategies, and uh, uh, setting learning rate. So some of the features that we provide in BigQuery ML is basically the full access to set of SQL, standard SQL functionalities, such as user-defined functions. So everything that can be expressed as a SQL uh, statement can be used in uh, SQL modeling and train uh, and prediction. Uh, we also, uh, in terms of modeling term, we support linear regression and also logistic regression. We started with binary models and just recently we, we launched, uh, launched multi-class um, logistic regression. Uh, we support multiple functions for uh, model evaluation, and we also support inspecting model weights for, um, for evaluating the model. So if you want to look at how BigQuery ML com is uh, com compared with other uh, Google Cloud products in machine learning, we can see on one hand side we have products such as Cloud Machine, uh, Cloud ML Engine, or a TensorFlow that are really fine-tuned for custom models, but they require a lot of machine learning expertise. And on the other hand, we have uh, AutoML, or Cloud ML APIs, which are um, very easy to use. They don't need machine learning specific knowledge, but they are not that customizable. And BigQuery ML uh, somehow sits in the middle, where you can do machine learning even without uh, you know, a lot of machine learning uh, expertise. Uh, but you also can build very customizable models. So it has use cases uh, in various industries. You can use it for uh, you know, predicting customer lifetime value or forecasting demand for traffic. Uh, I just named a few of these use cases in the previous slide. Uh, so with all that possibilities that BigQuery ML provides, I'm going to hand it off to Marcel to talk more about how we can use Looker for predictive analysis. Perfect. Thank you very much, Hussein. So I'm just going to come over here real quick. So before I dive into what this all looks like, how many data scientists practitioners do we have in the room by show of hands? All right, so a decent number, kind of spread throughout the room. Fantastic. So for those that are less familiar with what that process looks like for a data scientist, this is just kind of a general uh, layout of what that looks like. So you can really think about this as three different parts. The first part is getting the data ready that you need. Um, the second part is the actual fun part, the machine learning. And the last part is what you're going to do with that data. And now the slide that I'm showing here kind of shows really how complex that is in terms of the first part being where actually uh, data scientists tend to spend the vast majority of their time getting the data, cleaning it up, transforming it into the right way because the machine learning algorithms require it to be in a nice, clean format. So we need to make sure that we have all of the correct definitions for the metrics that we feed into there. And those could be coming from various databases. They need to be moved into the R or Python, whatever tool people are traditionally using. Um, and then that's where really the fun begins. And people end up spending only about 10 to 20% of their time actually doing the fun part. And then there's the last part of operationalizing this. And that oftentimes just doesn't even happen. So great, you have a regression analysis, so you know you can predict X, Y, or Z, 
What are we gonna do with that information? Well, sometimes that requires making a whole custom application. Uh, that might be too much effort that people don't find useful enough or won't provide enough value so it doesn't get made. Or if it does get made, then a lot of resources are spent on that. Again, not what a data scientist was typically hired to do. So now with, with BigQuery and Looker, we can kind of turn that whole thing on its head. Um, instead of having to move the data that we traditionally have to do, everything's gonna sit in BigQuery, and through the Looker interface, we can do all of that, what's called feature selection, of deciding what metrics we actually wanna put into our model, uh, and, and do this all in one interface. So the data doesn't move, we're not going through multiple tools, you know, one place to get the data, one place to do the machine learning, all of that's happening in one interface. And then finally, as we move forward to productionalizing this, that's gonna be much simpler with kind of what Looker already does. I wanna visualize this data. I wanna do, create alerting based on thresholds on these uh, propensity scores, whatever it might be. Looker already does that. It's natively built into the tool. So once we have something that we've built as a arbitrarily complex machine learning algorithm, that's ready to go. A front end business user can make the rules that they want to actually push this out to get an email alert or you know, have ad campaigns automatically go somewhere, et cetera. All of that becomes really simple and straightforward to do. So let's uh, switch to the demo real quick here. And I'll just give a live uh, demonstration here, semi-live demonstration of what this actually looks like in action. So what we're looking at right here, this is just some look ML code, just to give you guys a sense of how complex some of the metrics can be that we're going to create. So here, this is a whole correlated subselect that we've encapsulated in its own little piece of logic to predict out, in this case, whether somebody will make a purchase in the future X number of days um, from a session that they had. This is GA360 data, so they have a session, they visit our website. We wanna know based on their behavior in that session whether they'll make a purchase sometime in the future. So that all kind of encapsulates down to this X days from future purchase is this yes or no field. So we're gonna do a binary classification. Um, and now I have that. And I'm gonna use that in creating a table. So this is my training data set. Again, you don't even see any SQL here. This is Looker's way of defining all of that. And you'll see this will purchase in future is now just one line on that, even though it requires uh, joins and things like that in the background, we don't need to worry about that. So really we're simplifying already how we're going to put together all of that SQL. And then we just have some, uh, a few uh, filters on making sure that we have the appropriate training set. Uh, in this case, our window is 180 days into the future that we're looking to see if somebody will make a purchase. I'll just go down a little ways. Here we have that create or replace model statement that Hussein was talking about earlier. Again, we just put in a couple of different parameters, but the most important parts are that it's logistic regression and that this is what we're trying to predict. And now note that because we already defined that table, I just need to do a select star from it. If I make modifications to it later on, I don't need to change this. I only am going to change this if I actually am changing the parameters of the algorithm itself. And then BigQuery has provided us a couple of really cool uh, statements that we can use, like this evaluate one where I can input a data set and then uh, as well as use the function in conjunction with that model that I already created. And it'll spit out cool, you know, all the metrics we need, recall, precision, F1 score, all the things that I care about to be able to quickly evaluate this model. And so what that looks like in a summary dashboard could be something like this. Again, this is something I don't need to import, you know, a visualization library into my R or whatever it might be, or make it all in Python myself. Looker already does this for me. I can just take a look at all the metrics that I'm interested in, whether it's on the model itself or the training details of how, it, how long it took, how many iterations, et cetera, how it kind of honed in on, on a better and better model. Um, these aren't probably the best metrics to show off here, but it, the important thing to note is that we can just kind of go back and forth easily between these two. And I can even make this an interactive dashboard where I have end users putting in a threshold. Maybe it's, you know, I, I'm skewing one way or another based on the fact that one thing's more likely to happen. So I have an accuracy here, but I might be more interested in pumping up my precision and for a loss of accuracy or a loss of recall, all of that. So now the users can do that right at the front end here. And we can just kind of hop back and forth if I come down a little bit further over here. So we've got some of the basic information, uh, uh, the rock curve training information. Again, these are just functions provided out of the box for, uh, from BQML. And down at the bottom, I can create my future input. So this is the data that is yet unlabeled. And you'll see that it's the same thing as what I had before, except now I don't have that label, uh, the will purchase in future. 
bqml gives me this nice predict function. I've got that. I can literally just reference what it is that I care about, that probability for the future. So now we're labeling it um, in this way. And I have all kind of all the basic things that I, I need with this. And I can just join this table back onto my events table, right? Or my sessions table. So now I can, any session that comes into through GA360, I can just now label with this probability propensity that I've put on. And I can summarize that in a way or actually put it right into use with a dashboard something like this. So again, now that I have some guesses as to whether my users are actually going to be making those purchases or not making those purchases, I might see how I can play around with a few parameters and see if I want to send certain people uh, ad campaigns. So here I can have that same propensity threshold that I want um, and maybe make a few assumptions about, you know, how much does it cost to send one of these, what is the lifetime revenue per customer? By the way, each of these could themselves be more scientific and we could use BQML to predict them. But in this example, just for simplicity's sake, I'm just making them assumptions that I want right here. And then again, Looker is gonna do that simple calculation for us, going from all those propensities, how many more customers are we in it, what's that revenue gonna look like, et cetera. So this is a dashboard that now an end business user can use they don't need to know anything about the underlying data. They don't need to know what machine learning algorithm is being used or anything like that. They can now start you know, tweaking the numbers to see, okay, what's my ROI going to look like if I behave this way or if I behave that way, creating uh, a, uh, essentially a, a campaign um, set of, uh, of users. And we have this list down here at the bottom. And this is something that we can now easily export, send this over to Marketo, wherever it is, and it takes uh, all the action from there. Right? So again, the entire end-to-end -end process of building, iterating upon that model, exposing it out to the business user and having them take action without leaving the Looker interface and just having BigQuery just be that engine in the bottom that's just powering all this. So we don't need to worry about performance, of course, because it's BigQuery, it can handle any volume of data pretty much um, and, and have all the new machine learning capabilities now.